Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing something new. Yay! <laughs> this is going to be pretty fun. Um, I'm just going to be trying to make a repeating pattern today. It's pretty easy, to be honest. Anyone can do this. You can do it with text. You don't have to be arty to do it, really. Um, I'm going to be using two cats that I've already drawn. They're videos of me editing them up on my channel already, so please do go check them out. I could do with the views, to be honest. Also, I'm going to be doing it on Photoshop, because apparently this is a Photoshop channel now. You can do it with that, you can use the same software, you can download it yourself, or there is a free mock version of Photoshop almost online called GIMP that you can download and try out yourself. Maybe you don't like Photoshop that much, or maybe you don't want to invest in it for the sake of making a pattern or whatever, in case you might not use it. Try it out on there, you can do the exact same thing there. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to be showing you how to put the uh, pattern together on Redbubble so it looks good because that's what I'm using this pattern for. I'm using it for Redbubble to cover like like bed sheets and shower curtains and things like that that are like big because <laughs> I don't draw like this big. <laughs> I draw like the size of my head usually. <laughs> so stick around for that and I'm gonna get started. So before we get started with the main tutorial with the patterns and all that fun stuff, I just wanted to show you guys a little trick to make your, your image look a bit more cohesive if you're using two different things. So I've got this lovely cat here, already coloured in. If you watched the video you would have seen how I did that. And I want to balance them out with my second cat, which is down here. This is a serval. That's meant to be a caracal. So don't get confused if I call them by their names. Um, I want this guy's colours to match with his, and I've already done that in a way where I feel happy with it, that like they're similar but different. But I'm just going to show you really quickly how I do it. And that's using the colour balance tool here. The way it works is you move these sliders around and it will balance all the colours on the screen towards tones that are more, say, magenta or green, blue or yellow, and it will mix them so that it works. It's very useful if you're doing stuff like I did in my Peregrine Falcon tutorial where he was in a sunset sort of lighting. It's a very quick way to imitate uh, that sort of thing, I guess. So say I wanted him to be in a similar sort of lighting, like twilight kind of situation, I might want to push his tones more towards the warm side, so like your reds, your pinks, and your yellows. And automatically you can see the difference between normal cat suddenly the cat's sort of in like a yellow, goldeny lit sort of place. I would recommend doing this with both your images so that you can get their colours to coincide quite nicely because if I open my caracal up for you so you can just see real quick if it'll do it. It's gonna take forever isn't it? <laughs> um, you can see that it's quite different, in a way, from the original. So this is how I painted it. This is what it looks like with the adjustments after. It's subtle, but it's noticeable when it's printed. And because these things are going to be printed eventually, I want to make sure that my colours are good. You might have also noticed that there isn't a background on my images right now. That's what this checkerboard means for people that might not know a lot about Photoshop. This is it with a background, 
this is it without a background. Um, that is because when your images are ready, you want to export them here. So file, export as a PNG. A PNG is different from your regular photo file. It just has the ability to have a transparent background. And that's what we want. We want this to be like a big sticker that we can move around and adjust as needed. When you're exporting it, just make sure that you have PNG selected, not any of these other things, and transparency. You'll get a clear background image. And you can just hit export, name it whatever you like, and then you're good to go to start off with this. I'd also make sure if you're doing this with a line work image that you've drawn like I am with a lot of different weights. So if I zoom in a little here. My outline here. Sorry, let's. Yeah, this is a nice little pointy boy. My outline here is a lot thicker than my hair texture, my dot work. And even some of my secondary lines, like his markings and that, they're actually all different depths. And it's the same on the other one. You want to make sure that they are roughly the same size. You can do this while you're drawing it as well. You can scale it up to whatever drawing you did first and make sure it's roughly the same size and that you're using the same kind of line techniques. So that when you adjust the size of them, they don't look like two completely different drawings. They look like they were made with the purpose of being a set. So for instance, I've left the teeth quite plain, but the, the lips on both of these guys have these lines on them. Things like that, stylistic choices. Keep that in mind before you start drawing. And when it comes to editing, so obviously I've been fiddling with these guys so they're not just now, I would line them up together, like so, and just, you know, compare sizes of things, compare the sizes of their eyes, compare the sizes of their mouths, their noses in this case. How tall are they? These are roughly the same height, but in this instance his head is a little shorter, so I might want to scale them up, like I just did. But then it could be that you realise, oh, his eyes are too big now, so on and so forth. Just fiddle around with it until you get it looking like they're a set. See now, I don't know if I like the difference between these sizes of eyes. His are slightly bigger, you know? And it's just a case of moving it around until you get it what, like how you like. Once you've done that, you can start your pattern and it's very easy to do. <laughs> so how do we make a repeating pattern? It's not that hard, it's just a bit fiddly. I've opened a file, brand new, A3. The only adjustments that I've made is that it's in CYMK not RGB, and I've boosted the resolution from the preset, which is 300 dpi to 600, because I know that this is going to be printed by CYMK printers, and I don't want to use the wrong way. I also know that I'm going to have this on quite large products, so I want a high resolution image that is able to scale up and look nice. So you want it about 600 dpi for Redbubble. I've imported both my PNGs of my lovely cats. They're already scaled up. And to start off with, I'm just going to name these quadrants for you guys so you can understand what I'm talking about while I'm doing stuff. This is gonna be quadrant wrong. One, sorry, not Ron. <laughs> this is going to be two, three, and then four. 
I've split this page into exact quarters using the rulers, which you just click up here and drag down. And then the same with the side one. I know they're in exactly the middle because I have snap set up for this project. You really want to have this on because you might end up with a wonky pattern that doesn't quite connect otherwise. You'll see why in a minute. I'm going to start off by shrinking down my cats. I want them to be... I think I want them to be about this sort of size and I'm just going to do it with both of them. I'm going to get them up beside each other and make sure that they are roughly the same size because they are quite big. They themselves are actually a little bit under a three size. So I want to make sure that they look good together. Just going to do that. Yeah, I think that looks good. I think that looks alright. And all you're going to do is you're going to initially place them how you want, focusing around these like crosshairs that I've got up just now. Because we've shrunk them down, these are going to be my base sort of like copy and paste for the cats so I can just copy these guys and I won't have to scale down the cats every single time that I want to do something so I'm just going to transform this caracal just to start off with I'm just going to move him over here a little and I'm going to Duplicate them. It's the same as doing copy and paste. So now I have two caracals. Ooh. <laughs> I want these guys to be alternating. I kind of want them to not be straight up and down. I kind of want them a bit more like this. Because if I just wanted them straight up and down, I could just do that on Redbubble. So there wouldn't be much point making a video. I want them kind of like this, just to start off with. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my cerebral as well. I'm just gonna, you know, sort of adjust them so they're sort of where I like them, maybe a bit bigger. Remember to keep a bit of space in between your images as well. It can be really tempting when you're doing this sort of stuff particularly to sort of crowd them and like get them really up close in there sort of thing you want a little bit of breathing room because when you put your colors in the background you want them to look nice <laughs> and pretty much all you can all you got to do is repeat this along these crosshairs and maybe a little bit out as well if you've got like extra images and then I'm going to come back and tell you what to do next. Hi, and so I've had a fiddle around with these. I've been kind of trying to get them to look the way I want, but for the sake of just showing you guys how, I'm just going to leave it at this. I'm going to put all of my cats into a folder. Oh, whoops. I did not do that properly. All of my cats into a folder so that it's less of a, a clusterfuck over here. This layer is literally just my numbers. So this is where these quadrants come into play because the pattern we've just made is actually going to go around our final image is these are going to be the cats that connect all of my pattern together. They're going to be the connector things. The way you achieve that is you take your group, merge it into one image. I would recommend that you duplicate it, so don't do it like straight up what I just did. Um, and 
pretty much you can just click on your big old folder that you've just made dupe it and then hit merge group so now you've got one flat image with all your cats in it and then you've got like your original one where they're all separate and you can still move them around because you might find that when you put these together you don't like where some of them are and you might want to be able to move them in the future. Once you have your flattened image we're going to be splitting up our sections now. So firstly I'm going to focus on one and four so you want to do diagonal opposites not ones right beside each other. I've selected one with my rectangular marquee tool it's one of the select options i'm going to hit on my keyboard Control c to copy this add a new layer paste it with Control v really simple i'm gonna hide that for now make another layer go back to my original copy so it's called group one copy just now. Highlight this section. I have snap on, so I know that I'm selecting right up to the guidelines just now. Control C, Control V on the new layer. So when I take away the original, these two quarters are intact. What I'm now going to do this is a bit that confuses a lot of people, but it's really not that hard. So I'm going to take quadrant one and swap it with quadrant four. You're not rotating anything, you're just putting it right in the corner. Like that. And you do the same with the opposite corner. Like so. You see what I mean about how we're making the outer edge with that first step now? So what you can do is do the same thing again, except this time we're going to use 2 and 3. Control C, while you still have the original layer selected, create a new layer. Control B. Control C with the original layer selected, make a new layer, control V. Turn off the original if it's confusing you, and then we're just going to literally swap again, two and three. So they're all in opposite corners from where they started. You want this to look like a nice little outline of screaming cats if you're using similar images to me. <laughs> Just like so. So now that you have this lovely little outline of cats going on, you can fill in your middle section. So I'm just going to go back in and copy two of these cats real quick. And create another new layer. I know, it's very exhausting. Plop them in, and then I'm just going to fill up the space with cats so that it looks nice, it looks full, it looks like one big pattern. So now that you have this lovely random looking eclectic cat pattern <laughs> up in your screen, you're going to want to flatten your image again. So I'm just going to put this whole thing into one big folder again. I'm going to do the same thing again where I duplicate it so that I'm able to edit it later on if I want to. And then I'm going to merge the group again. And then I'm going to flatten the image. So I can always undo this as well. I would say 
for the sake of cohesiveness that if you really 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 want to edit this again that you save it and then use this as a new image so like open it again but then do your edit so that you can go back to your old file I'm not too concerned about this because I'm probably going to fiddle with this a hundred times before I post it, so I'm just going to flatten it. And we have all these cats. They're pretty cool. To turn this into a pattern on Photoshop, you need to now go with your flattened image to edit. Uh, where is it? I'm going crazy. I saw it like two seconds ago. Define pattern. There we go. <laughs> that was one of those moments where like I just zoned out for a second there. Edit, define pattern. And then you can name it whatever. So I'm going to call it cat two because I did a test run of this. And this is now a pattern. Save onto Photoshop that will repeat forever. So to test it out, I'm going to just make a new giant um, image. So I think this was a bit small last time, so I'm going to turn this to five so that I can make sure when it's really scaled up, because this is huge. This is very, very big right now. This is bigger than A1. So that when I use my image as a pattern, it will definitely, definitely join up. To use your pattern on a new page, go to edit and then fill. Got a custom pattern here, but I think that's my old one. Select the one that you've just made. For the sake of this, I put opacity at 100. You can fiddle with all this stuff so you can do really trippy things with your patterns if you're making something cool. I'm not. I just want my cats on a big screen. And then you hit OK. And you can see there's no weird bits where the cats aren't joining up. It's probably about this much give or take was from the image that we just made you see and it connects up perfectly so I've gone away I've uh, messed around with a few different styles of this image and the two that I like the most is the one that's on the screen just now where they're all quite small and this one where they're bigger, but they're in different sizes. So if I can be bothered today, I might upload both of these. But for now, what I'm going to walk you guys through on Redbubble is these lovely designs here, specifically the white one for now. And just sort of, oh, how I go about you know, putting all my stuff onto these different images and like sizes and scales of products, you know? Firstly, you just want to go on your Redbubble account to add new work. It's pretty straightforward and upload to new product or bleh, upload to all products. Pick the file that you want. This is the small cat, so I've already saved it so that you don't have to watch all that boring stuff and it's going to upload onto everything to start off with. I usually select design and illustration and digital art for my colored drawings and then for my black and white ones I'll do drawing because that's important for your visibility. Name it whatever. Your tags are the things that people will type into the search bar up here to find your stuff. So I usually put my name and then stuff related to like what's on the shirt, like the breed or cat or things like that. And then just a brief description. 
So most of my stuff works on the standard print clothing. I knew in advance that this one wasn't going to, so I'm going to disable both of these. The ones that it will work on are the sleeveless tops and all the chiffon and graphic sort of ones, like this, because it wraps around and duplicates your design um, over the whole space of the garment rather than just like a select square in the middle like these two do. You can zoom in on them. If you feel like your cats aren't quite big enough because of the size that I'm using this with, I have the option to zoom in a little. I tend to just leave it the size that it goes onto the shirt just for the sake of cohesiveness with the other products on the site. And it tends to be that they are scaled to the correct size when I put them on here anyway. Then what I do is I always look up here as well as down here when I'm adjusting where things are sitting because it might look right on here and suddenly you look up at the preview and you're like, oh, I don't like this cat ear here or whatever. And it's a good idea to look back and forth because you never know if it's going to be slightly wonky and you want to make sure that you have the most important stuff within the white section here but you also want to have some of your image peeking onto the light grey section as well because if not you'll get a hard uh, print end sort of line on your work and it will look a bit crap <laughs> and you'll probably have people returning your lovely products you know and you can just you can shuffle it around see where you like it but there you can see up here that's what i mean by a hard print edge it's very easy to do i've done it by accident before like with my first red bubble which wasn't as good so you know just be aware of it don't do it you can go through and adjust all of these individually. So far I actually like how it's sitting for the first time ever <laughs> without even moving it on most of the clothes. Usually I would enable stickers as well. I don't really like how small this is. So I'm not going to for this, especially because there's already two stickers on my Redbubble for each of the cats. You know, I like the majority of this phone case, but I hate the gap here and I hate that this cat is just sort of over there doing whatever. So I'm just going to try and adjust it so it's somewhere that I like it better. Hmm. Phone cases I find really fiddly, it's like, no matter what I do with my work, it just never quite sits properly the first time trying. <laughs> I think I like this one best, so I'm just going to leave it like that. This phone case is fine, I don't feel the need to do much to that. Pillows are like my favourite thing on here, I try and make sort of sets of stuff so that if people like me who like to have things that go together in their room and that want to get a few things that look similar they could get the line work for both of these on a pillow each they could get the colored big ones of them each on a pillow each and then like this one as well and maybe another pattern if i can be bothered putting it up i tend to like to just scale it up a little bit on these though because it gets duplicated on the back and I just think it looks slightly better. This looks a little crazy here but this looks a little neater and you can go through and do it on both of those. I'm not going to bother just now. This is why I wanted to do a big repeating pattern though because the shower curtains, the comforters, the duvets and the curtains uh, on Redbubble are huge. They're big pieces of fabric, they've got a lot of things to cover and I wanted my image to 
cover as much area as possible while still looking good. And I think it looks great right now, which makes me so pleased because that's what this was designed for, you know? Uh, another big one is the scarves. That's one to look out for. Leggings as well, which I'm going to leave off, I think. Um, if you're doing something specifically for the mugs, if you just have, like, let's zoom in, it looks a little crazy right now. Say you just have this cat and you just want that on here, just ignore everything else. Make sure it's placed in the middle of this, like, little red box here. Because if you push it too far to one side or the other, it won't be in line with the handle. And if you have it too high up, like even here, it looks fine here, but there's actually a beveled edge on the top and bottom of these mugs. And it will look crazy <laughs> on an actual one when it gets printed. I've learned this the hard way. That's a top tip, <laughs> just saying. Another thing to keep in mind when you're you're setting up your Redbubble products is you often have bits down here just above apply changes that are worth paying attention to because they'll come up on your previews on your page. So for the clocks, I tend to like the black around them the best because my my stuff has black outlines on like everything so I think it's cohesive and nice to look at. You can also change the colour of the hands and stuff and same with the mugs, you can change what preview they see first and it's very important to make sure if you do do this with just one image that you click this box because otherwise they're just going to see a blank mug. <laughs> I think this one, yeah this one's the same as well. It's like a travel mug thing, I think. Um, things like the socks, you have to be careful with the template as well because you might just have a cut down the middle. It's not really a lot you can do about it, to be honest. You just have to be careful about it and aware of it. But if you're doing a pattern like this, it looks good on pretty much everything. It's one of the beauties of doing it this way. I'd highly recommend trying it out and I hope you've enjoyed this video.